heart is Lily and Gray and I'm super excited for today's lesson. I'm going to teach you some awesome tips and tricks on how to use oil pastels. We'll be making a landscape honoring the Impressionists. There's a free oil pastel printout on our blog for you to practice the various tips and tricks in this video. For today's lesson, I'm using oil pastels and paper. I've got other things that's going to help me along the way like paper towel, earbuds and a scraping tool. A quick note on buying oil pastels. There are various size packs that you can buy. A cute little 12 set is great to work with if you can afford a bigger pack with 48 pastels. Um, it just gives you a lot more color options and really helps with the blending. If you would like to buy any of these art supplies, you can shop online with us. The link is in the description down below. Today, I am going to be working on an easel. You don't have to work on an easel. You can work flat if you like to. An easel just really aids with not smudging and getting your proportions right. What happens when we work flat is our eye first sees this part of the page, then the middle, then top, and when we flip it up, usually our drawings are out of proportion where an easel prevents us from creating a parallax mistake with our eyes. Have you ever wondered what is the difference between oil pastels and crayons? The biggest difference is that oil pastels, the pigments are held together using oil. With crayons, the pigment is held together using wax. By using oil and oil pastels, it gives it this buttery texture, a really smooth texture that is wonderful to blend with. It's much harder blending with crayons. However, you need to be cautious when working with oil pastels because they can smudge too much dirtying the colors. Helpful tips and tricks. First, lightly sketch out your drawing and then only start pressing harder. Make sure that you have the correct grip when using your oil pastel. I tend to hold it like I'm holding a knife, cutting a steak. Have paper towel or toilet paper or tissue paper close by so you can clean the points of your pastels since they can get a bit smudgy and dirty. A very helpful tip to me is to know which colors to blend together. Colors next to each other on the color wheel are called analogous colors. They blend really well together. Colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel tend to create mud. They are high contrasting complementary colors should be placed next to each other and not mixed together. Examples of colors that can be blended well together is usually your cool colors, which is your blues and your greens and your purples, and then your warm colors, which is your reds, your oranges and your yellows. To prevent smudging and dirtying my hand, I often put a paper towel underneath my hand while working on my oil pastels. It is totally normal for your oil pastels to snap and break as you work with them. The set is definitely not going to stay in some pristine condition. What's important to note when using oil pastels is you don't actually color in. You can leave a bit of space in between your oil pastel because you can save some oil pastel by smudging and rubbing it over the page. Use short, quick strokes overlapping each other to avoid white spaces. Press firmly. When coloring with oil pastels and applying it to the paper, think of it as squashing the oil pastel onto the page. Always use black last. Avoid using black in the beginning. It will dirty all your other colors. When blending, a helpful tip is to always start with a darker color and then blend with the white. So we work from dark to light, back to front. However, the exception is black. Black, you would like to add lost. A helpful tip is to brush your artwork clean with a clean synthetic brush, just a smooth brush that can gently brush away all the oil pastel flakes. Use a hairspray or a fixative to prevent the artwork from smudging afterwards. I will now be doing some expert techniques. Scraffito is an Italian word that means to scrape, to scrape away. What we are doing is we are applying our oil pastels quite thick. Then we're using a tool like a toothpick, 
a pen or a scraper to remove areas of the oil pastel. And this reveals the color underneath or the background color. You can create various line quality textures and patterns by using Scafito. An interesting technique to try is once your oil pastel artwork is completely done, you can paint over it using vegetable oil or baby oil. This dissolves the oil pastels and turns it into a painting. Just remember it will take a long time to dry, so you'll need to leave it for about two days. Heavy pressure blending. Generously add pastels in one direction on the paper. Layer colors to achieve a blended, rich, thick look. Light pressure blending leaves a lot of white space. Lightly add pastels in one direction on the paper. Layer colors to achieve various hues. Scumbling is when we do like a doodle quick scribble mark over each other using various colors to build up various values and texture. Color mixing. You can mix pastels on your page by adding two colors over each other to create a completely new color. Stipping. Use small choppy quick strokes to create a stippled effect on paper and layer with additional colors for extra depth. This is great when you try to mimic the Impressionist artists. You get various pastel papers that were made for oil pastels and soft pastels. The hexagonal design holds the pigment to ensure that it doesn't rub off the page. It's very important to use texture paper, especially when working with soft pastels. With oil pastels, you can get away with working on various kinds of paper. Today, I am working on smooth paper. It's also important to note that you can use various colors and then use the background color of the paper as an extra color when you create your artwork. Let it shine through, incorporate it into your design and your artwork. Now that you know various oil pastel techniques, let's create an amazing artwork. I am going to create a landscape inspired by the Impressionists and the Post-Impressionists. You will see I'm going to add some fuzzy edges that's inspired by Renoir, some stippling that's inspired by Van Gogh, and some interesting marks that's inspired by toulouse lautrec It is important to choose a good reference for your artwork. Ensure your image has a good value range. My reference today is from Unsplash. It's an awesome website with photos that do not have copyright on them. All they ask is that you link directly back to them, crediting the photographer. Today, I am going to do an olive grove. Here are some tips and tricks for setting up your station. Use sheets of paper towel or newspaper or a table cover to protect your desk. Your pastels will create a lot of flicks. Tape off the area with masking tape that you plan to draw in. This leaves a nice crisp clean line once you are done. My general approach here is to move from dark to light. I'm starting with my cool colors, the colors that will blend easily together like my blues and my purples. Now I'm starting to add my complementary colors as highlights. Notice that I'm not blending them. Here I'm using Scraffito to create extra foliage on the grass and extra leaves in the trees. As you can see here, I'm adding the black last to create the drama and the higher contrast. I hope all of you enjoyed this lesson quite a lot. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, drop us a comment down below. It really helps us to grow our YouTube channel, which enables us to create more awesome art content for you.
Please feel free to share an image of the artworks you are creating at home with us on our various social media platforms. I'm artist Lillian Gray and see you next time.